Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blow. Welcome to part six of my Craftsman LT2000 Repower Project. I've spent the past three episodes mostly dealing with an engine leak, oil leak on the engine block. I have three separate cracks and I thought I fixed it yesterday, but as I wake up today and look underneath, Look what I find. I was hoping that I was gonna not get any leaks, but as you can see, we've got significant leakage on the left side here. And as you can see, the double stack pulley I installed yesterday is full of oil. As I move the hood so that we can see better, the majority of, like a significant leak is on the left-hand side here, and I can't figure out why, unless this drain plug is busted. That could be it too, you know? Honestly, I wasn't gonna get more than 500 bucks for this tractor, you know what I mean? But I've spent so much time on it. But you guys know how I am. I'm pretty determined to fix something if I'm if I have my mindset to it. And being the fact that the engine runs pretty well, you know, I feel like it's a waste if I didn't try to fix it, you know? And it is just an oil leak for goodness sakes. So I have a feeling that that epoxy that I bought, by the way, I found out it's uh, I got it from Harbor Freight Tools. And so that epoxy is probably not sealing very well on the bottom because why? The surface, while I always cleaned it before I um, applied the epoxy, right? A little bit of oil will compromise the the curing of it and a prop and the proper seal of the epoxy onto the engine block surface. Well, what can you do? You got oil in it. You know it's gonna seep through the crack unless I drain the oil. <laughs> and uh, did it again and I went out and got the real stuff like JB Weld I haven't had a problem with JB Weld this is the first time I'm using that cheap epoxy from Harbor Freight Tools I mean while it works on this top part which isn't always you know contacting oil the one on the bottom is always going to have oil on the bottom you know what I mean up here on the top it only splashes up there you know but it's not completely filled with oil so I have a feeling that's the reason why it doesn't work so I might have to grind off the old epoxy go to Home Depot and get some real JB weld take the engine off unmount it again I shouldn't have mounted it in the first place I know but uh, let's get a better look turning it to the side again oh I've had just about enough of this you know I gotta try to fix it if I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a lot of Earl. What can I do? I gotta remove the engine again, flip it on its back, so we can really inspect exactly where that oil is coming from. It might be from that oil drain plug. While the plug is on there, right, the plastic part that goes on it, like right here, it pulls right off. And maybe the O-ring or the, or the plug that goes into the hole is not good. So I think I'll, Part of it is the oil drain plug. I might just take that whole damn thing off and put like a metal rod in there. Let's take the uh, double stack pulley off so I can get the engine off. Again, fortunately it's not that um, tedious, you know? And I only have three bolts on here and since we're here, I'm just gonna loosen it. I'm not gonna take it all off because it'll drop. It's 
long as you have impact tools, it's relatively easy. Okay, I'm gonna take this, uh, I'm gonna detach everything on it. Okay, for the second time, we've removed this engine and placed it on its back. And uh, there was a little bit of oily stuff here on this one, which I didn't think was leaking at all. But it seems like there might be some. And over here is where it's the worst, right there. I mean, it looks like it's, you know, pretty well put on there I mean it is a glob you know and usually with globs things seep through the globs unless it's like there too it's possible and I didn't get that part at all you know what I might have to just grind all this stuff off just to get it clean it still doesn't look like it's from the um, crank seal and I want to say some of it's coming out of here, but I'm not sure. But just to be sure, I'm going to I'm going to change this out to a metal pipe or something. And then we're going to grind this out. I wonder if there's enough oil in here to reach this level here. Then when I take this bolt out, it'll all come out. I'm going to be raising another pipe in a bowl. Those threads don't look very sharp, do they? Or crisp. Almost looks stripped. Got this other one here. At least you know that if it's leaking here, you could tell, you know? And it's hard to get that thing out, so I think this will work. Threads are sharp on the inside. I suppose I can put some Teflon tape in there if it leaks, you know? But this one, at least, you'll know that if this is in here and it's leaking from this area here, it'll, it'll, it's dripping too close to there, so you can't tell if it's the threads or if it's that. Here, you can clearly see that if it's dripping out of here, you'll know. If it's dripping out of there, you'll know. This has got like three inches of distance there. I'm going to put this in. used a wired bristle on my uh, drill and I really cleaned this part up really nice. Uh, there were parts of it where just chunks of it just fill, uh, flew off so it wasn't good adhesion because it was smooth and not um, rough like that. After you use that uh, bristle thing it gives it like this wired brushed look of roughness. This would adhere better. And as you can see, right after I've done that, you see that spot right there, this black spot? That's oil already coming out. So I think the, the big part of this crack is right there. And the reason why it's still coming out is because there's still oil on the top wall here that's slowly dripping down the wall here and coming out there, see? So no matter how much I wipe it with my hands, right? As you can see, now it's clean, right? Give it a few minutes or so, and you're gonna see a spot there already. So it to have it sit naturally so that 
all the oil residue that's on the top part of this thing that's leaking down the side of this wall has to end. And when that ends, this will be completely dry. And if this is really dry, I'll spray it with carb spray to clean the surface and then immediately adhere the, uh, or apply the new JB weld on here. That should do it. If it doesn't do it, I give up. I, I, that's it. You know what I mean? I mean, I've really, I really messed with this engine way too long than I should have, but it is a working engine, you know? So how can I give up on it? I have to keep going and get this engine so that it doesn't leak oil. So I actually flipped the engine on its upside down completely and oil spilled out all over the place through that breather tube there. And I didn't notice it until like half the oil was already out. I mean, it was a complete mess. Just spent like half an hour trying to clean up. But uh, I wanted to put it on its uh, upside down so that gravity would um, hold those blobs, you know? My first coating was too thin and I felt like it was just too thin, you know? So I put it upside down and dripped blobs on top of the part where it's um, most likely leaking from and reinforced it with a stream of blobs along the hairline. So uh, I'm not gonna touch it this time. I'm gonna wait for it to completely cure and then uh, at least the whole day. Then I'll put it right side up again and then we'll wait another day for this to cure uh, I know a lot of time invested in this engine but now I'm determined to have it stop leaking uh, we'll come back when this is all dried and cured might as well use the time tape up this seat know what I mean it's got some good cracks here I use electrical tape to do it I'm going to go Gorilla Tape, much stronger, much better. So far this looks pretty good. I don't see any oil blobs right there. It looks clean, but it is still on its back. I'm gonna wait for it to cure completely before I put it on uh, right side up and then wait for it to drip. So it's the next day. It's been sitting like this for a whole night. And uh, obviously I haven't put it like that yet. I wanted to see if it stayed clean. As you can see, completely clean. There is no uh, evidence of any kind of oil seepage through the hole. So I think this did it. If this leaks again, I would be dumbfounded. Now I'm going to put it down. <clears throat> and uh, we'll let it sit here for another 12 hours or so and see if we see any leakage. So I haven't sold anything in about 10 days. 
a slow time of the season, you know what I mean? But anyway, some guy contacted me yesterday and wanted to buy my Troy built uh, two stroke weed whacker that I've had for quite a while. Anyway, I had it listed for a hundred bucks, right? But I also wrote in the listing, <laughs> we'll trade for ammo. ammo. <laughs> and there was a guy who contacted me from Glen Cove and uh, he asked me what kind of ammo I wanted. I says, you know what? I could use some 223-556 ammo. He's like, all right, how many rounds you want? I go, well, let's see. How about 200 rounds? And he goes, okay. So I just met him at the church and we traded my Troy built weed whacker for 200 rounds of Tula ammo. <laughs> Isn't that awesome, man? This is the first time I've ever traded for ammunition. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, hey, whatever. You know what I mean? Ammo these days is more valuable than money. You know what I mean? It is steel case, but you know what? <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. Awesome. This one's one for the books. <laughs> Trading a weed whacker for ammunition. 200 rounds. So it's the third day, and uh, I've been basically waiting for the epoxy to dry on both positions. The top position, and then when I saw that it wasn't leaking after a full day, I put it back down again to have the true test of gravity pulling it down to see if any of it goes through. And uh, today I wake up, and sure enough, there are no leaks at all. Hi, Quinn. No leaks for the first time. Awesome. Uh, last night also, I smelled gas in my living room, which means that I had some kind of gas leak in the garage. So I came out here in the middle of the night to smell, and sure enough, the gas tank that I repaired with that epoxy, it lasted three, four days, you know, but uh, it just gave way. I just put my hand here and it was all wet and as you can see the epoxy just chips right off so that's not gonna work so I'm gonna drain this gas put it back in here and then I was thinking about here's like uh, one of those coat hangers you know plastic but it's cheap plastic you know actually it's pretty flexible I was gonna use this it's uh, for like a sprinkler heads whatever you know this is pretty flexible too if it just breaks right and you know that plastic is not good quality. But if it flexes, it's kind of like a polymer, you know what I mean? So it's more stronger. So I was thinking about just melting, you know, lighting one end on fire and having it melt and just drip it into the holes, right? And then use a solder gun and smooth it out. I might try that. Uh, other than that, uh, I might have to steal the gas tank off the other tractor in the back, you know, uh, the one that has yet to be fixed. So I have to try to fix this gas tank because we can't move forward without a gas tank, you know. So, uh, the vapors in the gas tank exploded. Big burst of flames went into my face. And I think I burned some hairs. <laughs> are my, are my like, are my eyebrows still here? Holy cow. Good thing I was wearing glasses, huh? So as you guys see, I have burned off my eyebrows. Well, I mean, I, I think they'll grow back, right? <laughs> Good thing I was wearing glasses so that my eyelashes are still here, right? And I was wearing a hat, so only this part of my hair was kind of burnt or scorched. Another interesting day here at Mowers and Blowers. So the whole point of me doing all that, <laughs> I asked my wife if eye eyebrows will grow back and she goes, yeah, I think so. Anyway, she was laughing. 
making fun of my misfortunes. Anyway, so there you go. I uh, basically just dripped all the plastic as it was burning, just dripped it on here. And it's pretty strong. I mean, you could only try, you know what I mean? And then the reason why I was doing that was because I wanted to drip it in the inside too, you know? The hole starting on the inside. I just wasn't thinking that there was gas fumes that would ignite. You know what I mean? You just don't think about that stuff. You're just thinking, I'm going to do it, and... <sighs> <laughs> what a learning experience. Well, what are you going to do, right? Uh, <laughs> it's always an interesting day here <laughs> at Mowers and Blowers. I don't know, I guess that... I guess that'll work, right? What do you guys think? Does that look all right? As long as it plugs the holes, you know? So I just put gas in it. It looks okay, huh? I just flipped the engine back upright again, and as you can see, no leaks. It's clean, too. This, too clean no leaks so it looks like we fixed the gas leak uh, oil leak and a gas leak <laughs> in the tank I'm gonna remount all this stuff For those of you new to the channel, you'll uh, you'll be glad to know that uh, automatic transmission fluid (ATF). If you put it into your tires that have slow leaks, it fixes it. So I just put ATF in three out of four of the flat tires. The fourth one is fine. So uh, when I go test drive it now, uh, it'll slosh around the tire, and hopefully we'll seal whatever slow leaks were in three out of the four tires. I'm gonna go move my car. Start this baby up. We're gonna go for a test drive. Long awaited. Since we had so much oil loss doing the testing, I'm gonna to top it off with some Lucas Oil 10W30. Okay, here we go. First start up in like three days. Fuel be a flowing. Joke.
battery died and now the engine died. stuck in the middle of the road, a block away. This is no good. This tractor is going to be the death of me, you know what I mean? Crazy. I have a feeling that the uh, rocker arms came off the valves what I'm thinking. This engine's been one hell of a pain in the ass, hasn't it? I almost don't even want to do it anymore. I almost want to just uh, throw this off a bridge. I could drive it in my van and go to the late nearest bridge, which is a little wild away. But I feel I've been working on this for forever. Uh, this is episode six or seven. It's crazy. This head has really given me uh, a headache too. Uh, the valve's just hinky, you know. I have another head, <laughs> but I have to dismantle like everything around here to get the head off. It's kind of a lot of work, you know. But uh, as long as this damn thing doesn't leak, we figure out what the hell's the, the problem. Oh man, that's not the problem. Look, it's still here. What could it be? Holy cow! Head scratcher, man. I thought maybe. Well, this is really loose, though. See, but it's uh, it's on here barely, but it's on here. You know, that's that's not right. Look, I'm not even doing anything. You just take it off like that. Or maybe I will change the head, but I'm not doing it today. I've lost my eyebrows. Repairing that damned gas tank. <laughs> Looks like it worked. Um, the double stack pulley back on. Finished up uh, the oil leak. Well, we'll find out tomorrow if it leaks anymore, but so far so good on that. We might have to change the head. This nut that affixes this on here is super loose. I could just hand turn it off. So I'm gonna put it back on again. I'm gonna tighten it, but I'm gonna put some Loctite on it. And not blue Loctite, red Loctite. You'll never get it off then. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's a red Loctite on it. Ooh, that's too much. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for joining me on this episode. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. That doesn't work. Oh my God, what a fucking nightmare. next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. 
Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.